do it. Have you guys seen the last episode of Dragon Ball Super? No. How about you? She has a Goku shirt on. I, no, I just got her started and she's right on to Dragon Ball. Okay. I, but you haven't seen it. So you're the Dragon Ball fan. Yeah. This guy. He hasn't seen the last episode of Dragon Ball. Have you seen any? No, I haven't seen Are you waiting for English? Okay, alright, that's fair enough. Alright, close <laughs> Are you looking for a high quality Dragon Ball Super review? Quite possibly one of the most high quality Dragon Ball Super reviews that are on YouTube. You are in the right place. That sounded arrogant. I give no fucks. But let's jump right in. Episode 35 of Dragon Ball Super just aired and I just watched it in English subs and all the glory. It was good. Ooh, I really enjoyed the episode. The episode was very, very, kept me on the edge of my seat. Uh, it wasn't just all about brute force. It, it, it went back to the tactical uh, aspect of Dragon Ball fighting where, you know, um, it's not just about like who has the higher power level. Like, there's certain elements that occurred that made you just like, you had to really think about what their next move should be or what would it be instead of just like a barrage of punches and kicks. And uh, you still, like I said, Dragon Ball Super is the perfect blend between Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z, where you have the beauty of, you know, Dragon Ball, you know, just, just the classic martial arts fights, uh, thinking about your next move, you know, how you're going to do certain things in battle. And then you have Dragon Ball Z, where it's just epic explosions, you know, just intense, you know, it, it's beautiful. I love Dragon Ball Super, right? And I'm not just fanboy. If they fuck up, I'm gonna be like, oh man, you're fucking up. But right now, I am loving Dragon Ball Super. If you're loving Dragon Ball Super, like this video. Dion, hurry up and just review the episode already. That was kind of my review part, all right? I don't, I do, I've just been recapping lately. But I review and recap. That's what a C review is. Welcome to the real world, motherfucker. Let's jump right in, episode 35. We pick up right where we left off with Frost and Vegeta staring face to face. Vegeta is tired of this motherfucker. He's like, nah, don't disqualify him. I'm about to give this guy the works. Apparently Vegeta saying no disqualification means he wants Frost to use his weapon in this match too. See, I thought that, you know, don't disqualify him, let's fight, let's have a fair fight now. Nah, he wants Frost to cheat now. Like, he's like, try, try me, try me. It's Frost, you know, is just talking a little shit. He's cocky too. He's like, you're like, are you sure? Are you sure you want me to cheat? And then he like lifts his arm. He has all this ejaculation action going on his wrist, you know, and then Vegeta's like, yeah. Bring it. Frost charges up at Vegeta. It's all intense. The buildup is intense. Vegeta goes Super Saiyan. One shot! Just smacks Frost right out of the ring. One shot. A lot of people uh, are a little disappointed that, uh, you know, Vegeta didn't, you know, just wail and go ham on him. I did want that originally, but, you know, this was almost more satisfying. Because, you know, just really just make him look like a little piece of shit. Smack him out. Get it over with. Because... The fact that he got it over with fast means we get to progress to the next fight faster too. Whew. Meanwhile, Beerus is up uh, in the stands with Goku and Goku, he's kind of analyzing Goku, you know, what's going on. Uh, he's looking at Goku's body and he finds the little hole in Goku's hand from when he fought Frost. You guys guessed it, Goku can come back because Frost cheated pretty much. Everyone agrees, everything's fine, and Goku is going to return. So Goku's like, yeah, yeah, I get to come back. So I'll go after Monaka, right? And Beerus is like, no, 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 no. You're still not going after Monaka. Monaka will be last 100%. You will go after Vegeta. Then Goku's like, well, what the fuck? Why, why, why not? Uh, that won't be exciting if I have to go right after Vegeta. Beerus is being very weird. He's hiding something about Monaka. This is according to the sub, all right? Keep in mind, this is a fan sub. Don't know how official this is, but the sub said, we said this about Monaka. Monaka has been unconscious ever since Goku fired his Kamehameha. What? What? So apparently Monaka being unconscious, he still has his eyes open, so he's not like knocked out. Because Goku didn't hit Monaka with a Kamehameha, but ever since Goku fired that Kamehameha, Monaka's been knocked out unconscious. So weird. And then we says, he asked Beerus, he's like, how long are you gonna lie about Monaka? So it's like, what, what is he lying about? About Monaka, like, what don't we, what do we not know? So a lot of interest was gained for Monaka after watching this episode. So Goku's trying to go up to Monaka to get Monaka's attention. Beerus is like blocking him like, no, back the fuck up before he gets smacked the fuck up. And then Goku's, you know, like waving at Monaka. Monaka is 100% unresponsive, just not responding to anything Goku is doing. You know, the waves, the talking. And then eventually Beerus just smacks Goku to the ground. The excuse that Beerus gives 
Whether it's legit or not, I don't know. I kind of think it's BS, but this is what Beerus says, according to the sub. It is dangerous being around him when he's concentrating his key, aka energy. And he doesn't care if you're an enemy or an ally. So pretty much, he's about to fuck you up. Um, don't fuck around with him while he's concentrating his key. Uh, he's destroyed an entire planet that way, he said. I don't know if it's BS. A lot of people are, you know, taking that and kind of running with it like, all right, he might be like an ex-god of destruction and he very well could be. And it makes sense because maybe Beerus had to like fight for his position as god of destruction and the person he fought was Monaka. No idea. Anyways, that's a conversation for a different video. Meanwhile, Vados and Champa are above the ring and they're adding another layer around the ring, like a, a, a cube around the ring. Uh, what I originally thought is like, okay, you know, extra protection, like, you know, it's going to be much harder to break through two different barriers if you get knocked out. Um, but apparently what this is, it's an, another perimeter. So if you touch this portion, like the out, it's almost like a cage match, except imagine a cage match in WWE, right? Except if you touch the cage, you lose. Kind of like that, a little more space, but that's a very, I think, a good way of thinking about it. So there's this box around them and it just serves as another perimeter, another way that you could lose. Beerus is losing his shit because Champa's changing the rules. They play rock, paper, scissors, uh, Jang Ken Paul. So they play rock, paper, scissors. It's godly rock, paper, scissors over uh, whether the rule, whether that stays or goes. And uh, long story short, it, it's gonna stay. Meanwhile, just when we thought we got rid of this motherfucker, Frost is sneaking out, sneaking out, going towards a crater, goes up to the crater, and then he looks into the crater. This is well outside of the uh, tournament grounds, by the way. Um, he looks in there and there's the loot. What I mean by the loot is apparently Shampa bribed the Universe 6 fighters uh, to fight along his side. I knew he had to bribe them somehow or threaten, but I guess it was bribery. Uh, and he was like, if you win, you get this shit, pretty much. There's a bunch of gold in one case and then right next to that gold is uh, the transportation cube, similar to what Whis used to bring everybody. It's pretty much the same thing, except Frost will later call it the Shampa's cube. So. It's different. It's Shampa's. Um, anyways, as Frost approaches it, he has this very interesting quote, once again the sub. He said that if he got Shampa's cube, he could be a god of destruction or a space patrolman. Now those are very different things, and like I said, the sub could have really fucked that line up. But, god of destruction. Hmm. What about this cube can make you into a god of destruction? Like, I thought Whis had to control the cube in order to make them go uh, place to place. So I would imagine Vados had to control that cube in order for its power to be used, but we have no idea. We never really thought too much about the cube uh, to begin with, but apparently Frost wants it so he can gain a lot of power, or maybe it's just to have the speed. Don't know. I don't know. A lot of, a lot of unanswered questions here. Because like this oob action I got going here. And then, as Frost approaches it, a voice in the shadows sounds off. Who could it be? We finally hear the voice. You guys know who I'm talking about. Keep your hands off it, the voice says. Then Frost looks over. Awesome build up. You just see feet, you see footsteps. Somebody's making their way towards Frost. And then Frost looks up and it's Hit. Hit's just walking up to Frost. Pretty much, you know, get your dirty fucking hands off that shit. Hit really wants that cube for himself too. Frost immediately recognizes Hit. I mean, obviously he recognizes him because he's been sitting by him, but he's afraid of him. Like, he's like, it's the legendary Hit. And whoever called that it was, that hit was a hitman, you were right. Awesome job, awesome job. Right when somebody said that, I was like, yes, yes, you are you, gold. And Frost is like, Frost is losing his shit. Like, oh, were you hired to kill me? Did Champa tell you to kill me? Uh, did somebody in the universe tell you to kill me? Hit doesn't even say a word. Just activates that weird fucking power where like behind him, uh, it's like cracking. It's almost like the dimension is cracking behind him. Don't quote me on that. I don't know if it's the fucking dimension cracking. That ice cracking, glass shattering look thing happened. And then on Frost, these vortex hole things like opened all over his body. And Frost just sounds like he's in agony, like excruciating pain. And it's just a move by Hit. Hit didn't even use his hands. His hands were like on his waist or in his pockets the entire time. And then Frost just falls out. Scary shit, man. Some scary shit. I... Hit, man! It is such a beast, dude. Such a beast. I love new techniques. That's a very mysterious technique. He's obviously on another level than his Universe 6 teammates. I think he's probably going to be on the Goku God form level. If not strong, I don't know if he'd be stronger, but that's crazy. How would he be stronger? 
Goku trained with Whis. Like, what did Hit do? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm jumping too far ahead of myself. For all I know, Hit might not be all that. We'll see. Way stronger than Frost, for sure. Anyways, Frost falls out. He picks up Frost. They walk away. Vados was off to the side. She was ready to jump in and stop Frost, too, if needed. Uh, but that didn't have to happen. So the next fight, Mageta and Vegeta. Vegeta's just chilling on the ring. Mageta jumps down. He's a heavy motherfucker. He lands, and then the entire ring just, like, tilts. He's drinking lava too, just molten lava, just like, you know, that's his Gatorade, just like, ready to fuck shit up. Meanwhile, the Kaili said that he's a uh, metal man um, in Universe 6. He's not a robot, he is a metal man. So he's like, think of like the Transformers. Transformers is a weird comparison. I don't know if you guys really watch it, but uh, Transformers are aliens, but they look like robots. They're not really robots. That's just like how they are. That's what they look like. Their physiology, they're like metal people. So similar, but different. The fight starts and Vegeta just kind of like right off the bat assumes like, all right, he's big, he's gonna be slow and strong, whatever. He was right. Mageta starts throwing these attacks at the ground and Vegeta's just easily dodging them. His arms are crossed the entire time like, you can't touch me. Just dodging everything, jumps up, does this ax kick, hits Mageta's head, solid. Mageta is solid as fuck. Doesn't even bud. Then he just keeps axe kicking uh, Mageta's the top of his head. His head's going lower and lower. Then Mageta just does this weird shit. Vegeta jumps off. Mageta starts banging on his head over and over again, making this loud clinging noise. Then grabs his head and pulls it back out of his body. Looks at Vegeta. And then he starts, he, he's constantly hitting himself. I've noticed Mageta's tactic, like before he'll go in for an attack, he'll just like either clap or he's dinging on himself over and over again or drinking lava whatever he attacks again except this time he's faster and stronger and vegeta notices like whoa he's he's gotten faster and stronger um so my theory is maybe mageta uh impact or like physical damage increases mageta's strength and speed because he keeps hitting himself like why would like i don't think it's just you know a glory charge i think you know he's hitting himself for a reason and it's making him stronger or more pumped up or something. I don't know, theory. So Mageta does like this tornado spin thing where he's just like spinning around like crazy and then Vegeta has to fly up. Vegeta says at some point, you know, I don't want to do a close quarters combat with this guy because, you know, he's fucking strong and durable. Like he, you know, trying to get the advantage. So he gains some distance into the sky. Then a uh, reminder that he has that fucking perimeter around him, that cage thing that he can't touch. And then he kind of realizes, or I realize, I think Champa and Vados just put that shit there solely due to the fact that it was Mageta who's fighting next and they know Mageta's limitations. And I think, this wasn't confirmed, but I think it's indirectly said that Mageta cannot fly. Not confirmed, I would have to rewatch it. I've seen it like three times, I think I'd have it. But um, I don't think he can fly. Because uh, Vegeta goes up into the air and then Vegeta is quick to say like, you know, why isn't he pursuing me up here kind of thing. Then he figures, you know, okay, can't fly. I have the advantage up here. So Vegeta's gonna, you know, be flying throughout the map. Vegeta starts shooting a volley of blast down at Mageta. Mageta's taking all these hits. Then eventually Mageta opens his mouth, fires up this lava beam. Then there's this beam struggle. Then, you know, they're just going at it. Uh, you know, Vegeta's shooting his blast. And then Mageta increases its power even more. I wonder if it's because the previous blast that made impact with Mageta. Once again, I don't know. Increases the power more and Vegeta's getting pressured, so he's losing the beam struggle right now. Mind you, he is on his normal form. Um, he's losing the beam struggle, he gets a little pressured. He starts to try to fly away to, you know, clear some space. He needs to, like, dodge out of the way of all this fucking <sighs> burning hot magma that's coming at him. And uh, he gets close to the corner, a very enclosed area, so he's in trouble right now. So Vegeta is definitely on the defensive at this point, uh, flying around, and then eventually he's cornered. He's surrounded by the steam and the uh, lava. There's nowhere to run pretty much. Goes all around him and then we think, oh man, that could be it for Vegeta. Fuck no, I knew it wasn't it for Vegeta. He goes Super Saiyan, blasts all that fucking steam and magma and even Mageta back. Pushes them all away and then the fight really gets started, right? They have a stare down, they're looking at each other. Uh, Goku's, you know, excited for Vegeta, you know, he thinks Vegeta has the advantage. Then Whis quickly says, Vegeta's in trouble. Then it shows a close-up of Vegeta's face. He's sweating and he's out of breath. Um, I think the temperature is going to be a temperature type of battle where like, you know, Vegeta is going to have to win before it gets too hot. Uh, Mageta has this advantage because it's an enclosed area. It's going to be like uh, in, hot boxing on the tournament thing. Yes, I'm from Colorado, but I'm not referring to that kind of hot boxing. I'm referring to this kind of hot boxing. Episode 36 preview. The fight continues. By the way, before I go into episode 36 preview, this episode's art was great. There were some awesome shots of Vegeta 
like towards the beginning of this episode and overall this was an amazing episode to me i really enjoyed this episode even even vegeta one-shotting frost i loved it this whole episode spectacular it moved fast the pacing was great a lot happened um definitely watch this episode if you were thinking about it if you were considering it must watch watch this episode episode 36 preview the fight continues Magetta gets pressured a little bit it looks like vegeta has Magetta like on the edge of the ring at one point and final flash Vegeta has the legendary final flash in the next episode. It's not just like a basic like quick final flash. It looks like the like the charged up, like the real final flash. And I'm excited. I'm really excited, man. Ah, Dragon Ball Super. You done did it, man. You done did it to be a man. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much for watching. Hey, if you haven't yet, make sure you like this video and uh, you know, share this channel all over the place, you know. Let people know where they should watch their Dragon Ball Super reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. Subscribe to Syriax. That's me. Getting closer. Gonna end this because this is awkward. Still there? Still there? It's my little brother's thing. He used to always say that. It's weird. Voila!